normal today. Actually, I'm just showing off the scarf that my in laws got me. So. <laughs> we like to begin our morning first with announcements, followed by passing of the keys. So, uh, we will be making some announcements, obviously, that, that are sort of pastoral or congregational concerns during this prayer. But we did just find out, so I'm going to pass on to you now, that Judy Fuller passed away. She had moved down to Pennsylvania with her daughter just two weeks before, and we were out at her house, and we caroled to her the day before she moved. But according to what we know, she had a stroke on Christmas Day. We are going to try to confirm the details, um, but just just so you know, call call my family in prayer Heart attack. Heart attack. Okay, sorry. Heart attack on Christmas Day. So, you know, one one follow this so we'll the line. Um, are there other announcements for the life of the church? What were the not is Panther I want to thank everybody who has brought two questions um, for my trip to Honduras this one more week that I'll be collecting them, but I really don't need two hundred more right now. Before I open my email, you know, it's best to see a very timely uh, message uh, about feeling blessed. This is very uh, inspirational. I just want to thank everybody who is this week for the emails, the phone calls, the Facebook messages, etc. And uh, uh, I was just, when I got that email, and you realized uh, how blessed I am to have the members of the Jackson Community Church. So, uh, uh, just a moment to reflect on feeling blessed. Tony was in the hospital earlier this week and was able to come home in a relatively quick amount of time and very good care for Memorial. Uh, but I believe you're saying you felt the love of community around you and so appreciation for those who reach out to each other and keep us connected. Are there other announcements for the church? Uh, um, well, some of you may have seen us uh, uh, rehearsing the uh, confrontational hymns that are this up there. Um, so if you have a voice um, that you'd like to um, share, um, usually around 10 o'clock, um, right before the service, so more than ever. Um, obviously, it helps with being all the sort of a pop-up choir just to kind of lead us in our congregational music. We, we have not had a choir director for a while, um, and we all miss choir music, but our, our choir members and other volunteers are helping us lead our own congregational song, so we'll be doing some of that today. Other announcements? I have two more to bring to your attention. One is that if you look on the back of the bulletin, just you'll remember where you will see that we have our upcoming annual meeting on Wednesday, January 22nd. We start off with a potluck dinner, followed by a business meeting at 7 o'clock where we review the budget, the officers, and just anything else that is appropriate for that time. If you, everybody's welcome to come. If you're a member or an associate member, you can vote, but everybody's welcome to come and listen to what's going on in the life of the church. Their annual reports are already prepared out back um, on the table, so if you need one, feel free to take one. We will also send it, I'm actually doing, has already sent it out as a digital copy too, so you can use that if you want to save the paper. Second is that on Wednesday, January 29th, our county is going to be counting not birds, but homeless people. So we're going to, anybody that's interested in volunteering, we will put people at different places where we know we might encounter one or two of the folks that 
are either homeless or in transitional kinds of housing that still qualify under federal guidelines as homeless. The purpose of documenting this is so that we can report somewhat accurate numbers back to the state. It helps us with funding and resources for our county. We have never really accurately reported these numbers at all. We've never actually had, I don't believe, a plan to collect the numbers. And we are working with Tri-County CAP this year to stage as many monitors in as many places as possible. So if you're interested in helping for an hour or two at any point, uh, I will be sending out an email. So if you're on our email list, you can just RSVP to me and say, yes, I'd like to help. And we'll assign you a place to go. You can tell us what time of the day. And we have more details to follow, but just hold Wednesday, January 29th, if you're interested in helping with this initiative. You do not have to have been trained to be at the way station or anything like that. This is sort of a broader canvassing, one-time deal of our community. Last chance for announcements. All right, then let's just rise for a minute or two and greet people around you and welcome people. Make everybody feel at home. <laughs>
one to call worship here in the bulletin. And in case anybody is unclear on the pronunciation, the word for God's name is Adonai. You send to us your servant whom you uphold. You are chosen in whom your soul delights. Chosen one will not cry out, nor break a bruised reed, nor quench a dimly burning wick. We hear your word, Creator of heavens and earth. And now you call us, take us by the hand and keep us. Chosen one, we open eyes that are blind. We call your name and recognize your glory. There's a young man named Mason who often volunteers with us. He's a young he's a teenager. He lives with his grandparents because his parents are not able to have him in custody. And his father overdosed and died two days ago. So his grandfather, with whom he lives, is devastated and is working on that situation in Massachusetts. Um, so we hope these families who have had such devastating changes. Sometimes it's a threshold that needed to be crossed. It's a person who lived for a long time with an illness that was debilitating, but these changes are always difficult. And so we pray for those who are grieving new, for those who have lost already, and these holidays bring it all back again. We pray also for Evie, who is the daughter-in-law of one of the people in this congregation right now. She is six months pregnant, and she's in the hospital being treated for bleeding. We pray for the sustainability of her pregnancy. We pray for those who are caring for her, that they may stabilize this condition for her and her unborn child. For all those who love her and wrap her in their own prayers and love, that every prayer that we offer to her is a prayer of hope and a prayer of resilience. We cannot know the outcomes of the things that come to us. What we know is that God is present with us through everything. That is the promise that is given to us, and this is the promise that we lift up today, that God will be present where God is most needed in healing and in love. I was also asked to raise up Australia, the devastating fires that are going on, places where earthquakes have happened, Puerto Rico, and just the crying out of our earth, reminding us that it is changing, and we must be tender and vigilant right now, thinking ahead for future generations. Are there other prayers that you would like to raise up this morning? I'd like everybody to say a prayer for Judy Schumann. She hasn't been very well, but she sends love and there's 
gratitude for the full moon and how the light fell on the snow while we had snow. Other, other things that give you hope. Then let us pray. O oh, holy God, by all the names that we have called you over centuries out of mind, we ask for your healing presence. For your love that will not be turned away, that shows up even when we didn't know we needed you, that shows up when we do cry out to you, and sometimes we don't know until we look backwards over time that you have been present, that you are always present. And so we give thanks for the fingerprints of your presence in our lives, the way that you hold us and walk with us and insist upon claiming us. We ask that you will be present in all the parts of the world that we name that are hurting. And with all the people that are making decisions that affect all of us, our leaders, and the leaders of our nations, we ask that you will be with our children and our grandchildren, <coughs> our children born and unborn, those who have gone ahead of us, and those who are here with us. We ask that you will bless those who have come together before you and with you this morning. And we offer you now our silence. Please hear us, O God, as we pray together, as you first taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thou is the kingdom, the power of God. John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And the second reading is from Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, and 21 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The second part is the baptism of Jesus. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from, his head, from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Did anybody notice that the two passages were sort of the same story told from two slightly different voices? read both of these stories, mostly because of one particular sentence. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. The difference between the story in Matthew and the story in Luke is that line. That, for me, today is the significant line. It records that Jesus prayed. There are several times throughout the Bible where we hear the actual words of Christ. The prayers that he prayed to God, calling him Father, or my God, my God. And there are other times when we hear that he did pray, we don't know exactly what the words were, but we know that he prayed. We know that he prayed in the morning and in the evening. We know that he prayed before and after great events in his life. We know that he blessed the meal when he was creating miracles of food and distribution, or when he walked the road to Emmaus, or on the night of the Last Supper. He was a man of deep faith, and he came out of a tradition that was already embedded with the tradition of prayer. And so, though we don't always know what those words might have been, we know that he was a man who reached out to God with his voice, with his body, with his whole way of being, and was often in conversation and communication with God. And when we say that we are following his example, let us remember that we are indeed not alone. That when we do what we did this morning, when we say out loud what is on our hearts, the people that we are most worried about are the people that we are celebrating, the places about whom we express concern and hope. When we raise them up out loud for each other or for God, we are putting ourselves in connection with what is sacred, and we are finding a way to resilience and strength to do whatever must come next. And we know that when you pray, there's not some right way to pray that's going to make sure that you get the answer that you prayed for. It's not like if you clasp your hands and you do it at the right time of day or with the right words or with the right amount of oomph, the answer is going to change. One of our friends used to say, Sister Lenore would say, God will always answer your prayer, you just may not like the answer. Because again, sometimes what comes is not a solution or a miracle. Sometimes it's literally just the tangible presence of love. And it may show up as a hot loaf of bread or a phone call or a friend at the door. Something or someone that you need at just the right time. And how often have we missed the prompting to be that presence of love for someone else because someone was on our mind and we didn't quite make the reach out to the one who probably could have used the connection. Sometimes the connections fail. They don't always make it. But what other possible we are the connection between prayer and love showing up in someone's life. And so every time the way station is open, that place where if you are homeless or housing insecure, you can go for a shower or laundry or food or to pick up your mail or just to sit in the company of other people and get warm. There may have been three days where missed connections mean that you've been cold and dirty and hungry, but at least the door opens a couple of days a week 
and you are recognized, and you can make connection with what is needed. And when we go out on Wednesday, January 29th, and we count people, we are a walking, living prayer, looking for those who need love most tangibly in their lives, and we are saying, I see you. You are important, you are a child of God. And if God is going to show up, it's going to be me this morning in a parking lot with a cup of hot coffee from Dunkin' Donuts to ask you a question about where you slept last night because it matters. And I took the time to find you where you are because of how important you are. When we look backwards in our lives, we can see and name the times that God showed up, that love showed up in the most hard-pressed places, in the emergency department, in the surgical ward, on the street corner, in the classroom, maybe here in this church, sitting at a table, in the line at the bank, or at the cash register at the grocery store. Who knows where the connection is made? But the connection happens, and love shows up. But part of doing that is the spiritual practice of naming what you need and also opening yourself up to be the one that is walking out as the source of love. One of the prayers that the Jewish tradition taught, and they taught it certainly at the time that Christ was a young man growing up inside of his faith, and long before that, is the Shema. Shema, S-H-E-M-A. It's prayed at the beginning, at the end of every day. It's part of the larger cycle of prayers on high religious holidays. And as I learned when I was a hospice chaplain, it is the last prayer that you will say when you are dying. Christ certainly would have prayed this prayer multiple times a day much as we might say the Lord's Prayer. So this morning I share with you just two verses of the Shema. That you may hear the words that Christ learned. Shema Yisrael Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Baruch Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. We believe that Jesus was the Son of God, that God lived within his body and that he was holiness incarnate. And yet he too needed to pray. He too needed to be in connection to God the Father, God the Mother, God the Creator. He too had a spiritual practice. And so this morning, the invitation and the challenge for us is if you don't already have a regular spiritual practice, a way of having a mindful and contemplative, quiet time in your day, Maybe now is the time to start creating that practice. Thich Nhat Hanh suggests that when you hear a bell ring, any time during the day, if you hear a bell ring, and they actually have an app for it, they'll send it out. So you could be at work, sitting at your computer, ding. Can you just take your hands off the keyboard for a minute? And you pause, and you breathe, and you pay attention to what's around you. And you give thanks for it. And take note of it. And be in the presence of yourself and yourself in the presence of holiness. There are so many ways to have a spiritual practice. When you walk your dog, when you first wake up and make a list of three things you're grateful for, or when you end your day the same way. Lighting a candle, reading the scripture, or finding a special inspired quote, 
turn into poetry or literature or song. It can be moving, it can be silent, it can be filled with noise. The point is to have a practice because it will help you connect, remind you that you are not alone, and begin to give you the resilience that you need to open yourself to the love that changes you and helps you be present to others. Again, I say to you, Shema Ya Israel, Eloheinu Adonai Echad, Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Baruch Shankavad Mahuto Lecham Vaden. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Thanks be to God.
his prayer, as you have heard so many already this morning, here and all over the world. Bless what we offer to you this morning. And may we offer you first our lives, whole, holding nothing back, offering all to you. And we take also these offerings that we have placed in this plate, or that we have given to you as song and time and thought and energy, and turn it to those places and people in the world who need your love. Thanks be to God. Oh look, more singing. <laughs> so please rise if you're not already risen. And uh, we will be singing Psalm 386, We Are One in the Spirit, followed by the benediction, which is printed in the bulletin for anybody that came to us. Afterward, there's all those good goodies in the parish house, or if you're going out the front door, you'll find me there and I'll give you a chance to ring the bell. Mm -hmm.